there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to take a look at a paint brand that I've been using for decades, but I don't know if I've ever actually reviewed here on the channel, and that would be Da Vinci, made in the USA paint. It is a workhorse, and it's probably my number one pick I recommend for teachers that are looking to get a pro grade paint for a student grade price for their students. So, Let's take a look here. I put this paint in a large tin that I had from a um, from a set that I purchased a couple years ago. They were they had some good deals on the Aowen paints, and I just pulled that tray right out, and I'm like, I am going to use this for these paints. And I've got kind of a random assortment here and a random looking swatch, but. Um, I will go through the paints, how long I've had them, um, when I got what, and what my overall impression is of the brand. We'll also look at some artwork that I made with these recently, and because I wouldn't trust um, going back through the archives and remembering exactly what I used the Da Vinci for. So I started off with Da Vinci paint probably in the late 90s. I was teaching at a nonprofit and I had been using the Cotman 21ML tubes for my watercolor classes. And then I saw an ad in the back of, I think it was the Artist Magazine or Watercolor Painter, one or the other, and they had a 37ML offer. There was six 37ML tubes, a mixing set, split primary from Da Vinci paint. And I teach it using a split primary palette. So I decided to give it a try. It wasn't very expensive. It was a brand new offering. I don't know if the company was new, but I'd never heard of them before. And I bought it. And um, the colors that I got were, I think it was like, it was Red Rose, Red Rose Deep, um, Dye Ride Yellow, Prussian Blue, Ultramarine Blue. Um, and I think, I think it must have, or Hansi Yellow Light maybe. And then, um, I was really pleased with those. I'm thinking it might have come with like a Hansa yellow medium or, or like a little bit warmer of yellow, but I've used it up and I don't have the tube anymore to double check. Um, and then over the years I purchased um, burnt sienna and I per purchased permanent lizard crimson and yellow ochre and pay no attention to that sap green. That's uh, my Mary blue and I just had it in there because I didn't have uh, a sap green and that's a color I use a lot. Um, oh, and I've also, I also have picked up Thalo blue. It might have been, it was either Thalo or Prussian that came in that first set. I'm not sure. I probably bought the Prussian and the Alizarin because I was using those for my cool blue and cool red at the time. Um, but I was very happy with them. They performed really well. I had no qualms. And I think back then actually Cotman was a little bit better quality. So the Da Vinci was better. It wasn't it didn't like it knocked my socks off a bit like for the price but um but it was definitely better than but comparable to the cotman at that time back when they were made in either france or england now cotmans are made in china they're not quite what they used to be they're not they're not awful but you know they're not they're not where they used to be anyway um so that's where i started and i used those a lot and um they just became work workhorse paints in the background i guess i didn't really think about them too much other than if i needed to buy more ultramarine blue i probably would just grab that because it was the most affordable option and and there was nothing wrong with the paint. The paint was fine. The paint was good. Um, M. Graham was my first like full studio palette of colors and I bought that uh, probably after I tried the Da Vinci. I tried a few different brands and then I decided to just go whole hog with those because my local art store had a good good price on them when they were bringing them in. That's also another American made paint by the way. Um, so then that, that's my favorite brand. I have nothing against Daniel Smith. People always think that if I if I don't mention Daniel Smith when I'm mentioning um, other paints made in the USA that I'm slighting them, I have nothing against them. Um, they're a good paint. So uh, after that, I hadn't really added too many to Da Vinci colors to my collection except for Yellow Ochre and um, Burnt Sienna just because I had so much, so much other paint. Um, but then a viewer, MJ Pete, uh, is his YouTube handle, he asked if I would consider reviewing Da Vinci, and I thought I'd had, but, um, but I wasn't sure, but he had the Denise, um, Denise Soden's Earth Friendly palette, and he made me a little sampler with it, with um, the different colors, and here I swatched it out. And so her palette is all colors that do not contain heavy metals, so like if you're plein air painting and you're dumping your water out, um, on a lawn or something like that. You don't have to worry so much about it. Um, and these are the colors that are in that set and they're all lovely colors, non, mostly non-granulating, very smooth, sheer colors. Um, I prefer just picking out my colors as I need them just because like there's several like kind of golden ochre colors and there's several browns I just, and the reds aren't what I would choose. So um, it's a lovely palette. It's not my, using that as a palette was not for me, the best choice for the Da Vinci paint. So um, back at Black Friday, they had a big sale. They had 60% 60 off their paints and then they had a, a free holiday trio 
if you bought, spent $75 in free shipping. So um, that tempted me, friends, and I did. I'm like, well, if I'm gonna do a review on this, I might as well buy some more colors. So I did. Um, I actually, and my, that was my second uh, big buy of DaVinci Paint because uh, Blick was also running that same 60% off sale and I bought some gouache at Blick because I needed to get some other things at Blick. And then it was after that that I saw that sale and I was like, ah, oh, the holiday trio, the free holiday trio really, uh, really got me, got me in. I will show you them, their paint tubes because their paint tubes are kind of cool. This is like their, and this is part, mostly, well, half used. This is the size of their tubes, 37 ml. That used to be, I think, all they had, but now they have... Um, now they have a 15 ml and a 8 ml. I have, I don't think I got any of the 8 mls. I did buy some of the uh, of the 15 mls, and but I usually get the the 37 mls if it's a color I'm going to use a lot because I have a fear of of running out, I guess. But just to show you what like a typical 5 ml tube looks like, you know, if you compare that, I mean, look at how much paint that is versus how much paint that is, and. Um, yeah, some I think some of these 37 mLs I paid between like I'm thinking like around 15, 15 to 20 dollars for those. Um, so it wasn't. I think I only paid like around eight for those. So it's. I mean, they were a really great price. They're. I don't know if they're still on sale at Blick. They're not on sale in DaVinci anymore. But anyway, so I decided I'm gonna get some colors that are unique. I'm gonna get some colors that I like, that I want more of, and I'm gonna get some colors that are new to me. So um, we can look go through here and I'll tell you what I bought, what came as a gift from MJ Pete, and what I bought just now. So I had the Red Rose Deep, and there was also one in Denise's palette. Um, I had the Elizabeth Crimson, I think there was also one in Denise's palette. Um, the Perline Maroon, I think it was from Denise's palette. The Da Vinci Red was from De Denise's palette. This, um, I think it's a Pyrrol Red. This is from the Holiday Trio. It's PR145. Then the, Ver the Vermilion Hue, I had that from decades ago. Then there's the Quinn, uh, Quinn Orange, that was from Denise's palette. New Gold is from the Holiday Trio. So it, there was three 15 ml tubes for free in that, with the Holiday Trio. So I mean, that's really what tempted me because I'm like, I, I love, I don't know what it is. I do like using palettes that other people choose for me. It's kind of like a challenge to have other people pick my colors and then work from them. I don't know. It's like I love novelty palettes like the other artists put together for that reason. I just think it's kind of, I don't know, charming and challenging and just kind of fun. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice is... Um, is dying. I had to stop. I was recording this, but then my daughter was yelling down the stairs at me, so I decided to restart it again. Uh, gold Yellow, Hunts Yellow Deep. Those are both from Denise's. Aralide Yellow I had, and then there was one in Denise's. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> oh, I apologize. Um, Cad Yellow Lemon. I bought a big tube of that because I think it was like only 20 bucks for a 37 ml tube. Uh, Hunts Yellow Light. I had that from decades ago. Green Gold is from Denise's palette. Denise's Green was from her palette. Yellow Ochre I purchased. Those two are from Denise's palette. Uh, Pyroline Green is from Denise's palette. Thalo Green I think was also from her palette. I bought Viridian Genuine because I like the texture of it and it's a nice bright Viridian. Um, I just got a smaller tube of that though. The one you saw, the 15 ml. Sea Glass I purchased. That was PR15 colon 9. Um, this Thalo Blue is from the Holiday Trio, that's uh, PB16, which you see more in like uh, paints from China and Korea. I don't know why. I don't think it, maybe it's not as light fast as, as the PB15, but they're all Thalo Blue incarnations. Um, Thalo Blue, I had that for decades. Cerulean, I just bought that one because I do love a Cerulean Blue, and generally that's a super pricey paint. So getting it in the big tube for what I would pay for a small tube of it in another brand, I thought, yay, I'm going to do that. A manganese blue mixture, which is a mixture of the true manganese blue plus PB15 for a little boost, I guess. But um, it, that's hard, a hard color, hard pigment to find because it, it has been um, extinct or discontinued. And I want to try it out. It's very similar to cerulean in that feel. It's got a feel similar to cerulean, but it's a little more green. It actually might be a little sim more similar to the. Um, I was say it might be a little more similar to core, but no, I guess it isn't. It's 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 um uh, yeah. I, I think that would be very useful though. Anyway, um, the Cerulean Hue was from Denise's palette. That's real Cerulean, that's Cerulean Hue. You can see the difference. Cerulean Hue often, well that one is um, PB, is that PB 16 plus, or 15 plus PW, uh, PW6 maybe? I can't see because I glazed over it. <laughs> Prussian Blue I've had for ages. Indothrone Blue is from, is from Denise's palette. Ultramarine Blue I've had for ages, and it's also, I think, from Denise's palette. I bought a French Ultramarine. That's gorgeous. Look at it glow. It's just such a beautiful, bright, textured, 
uh, purple leaning ultramarine blue. I love it. I love that color. Um, I bought an ultramarine violet in a big tube because I love that color too and it's very textured. Um, I like a paint line that has variation between their paints. I don't like them all the same consistency. So that's that might be different. Some people probably don't like that, but I like the I like it when each color has its own little personality. Like some colors granulate, some colors are super transparent, some colors are a little bit more opaque. I like that variety because then you can pull different moods and feelings into your paintings. Um, and then dioxazine violet, which is from Denise's palette. Um, and these browns, the burnt sienna I had, the other browns are from Denise's palette. Um, and this is, I feel like it's all you need. I do have the sap green in here because I just love to have sap green. This is my Mary Blue. It's an old one. Um, it's a mixture. So I don't know what they're doing with sap green now at my Mary, but uh, if they do it at all. Because now I think my Mary is only single pigment colors. But anyway, I stuck it in there because it was in this palette, this small palette that I had with my Da Vinci's before. And I want my palettes to be useful. I just don't want them segregated by brand just to be segregated by brand. Although that is kind of handy here in the YouTube in my YouTube career, I guess, but um, but anyway, so I made this um, this swatch and I did a glaze, and I mean everything is to be expected. They're a workhorse. Now, why I, I don't write home about them or like brag on them a ton, although I recommend them, is because I feel like they're maybe not quite as high quality as M. Graham, Daniel Smith. Um, Winsor, well, Winsor & Newton, I don't know, Winsor & Newton's not my favorite, but you know, I think that there is a certain like step down and I don't know what it is exactly, but I think there maybe is a little bit extra water or a little extra filler or something because the paints do crack when they dry down. Um, a lot of paints do, they just pull from the edges a bit, it just seems like the paint evaporates and it just kind of pulls away a little bit. It still works fine, it still rewets fine, it's just something that I noticed. Um, and something that I would see in like the old, uh, the old style Cotman's and I would see in certain brands, not M. Graham. Could be like a lack of humectant maybe, but they rewet fine so it's not really an issue. It's just when I see that kind of pulling from the sides, I feel like maybe I'm not getting as much as I think I'm getting from the tube if like there's additional water. I don't know. I don't, I don't get that feeling when I squeeze out the paint and go to use it. It seems perfectly strong and wonderful. But that's, yeah, I just wanted to mention it because, you know, uh, pays to mention that stuff, I guess. But then I've got other ones that have absolutely no cracking in it. Those are just ones that have, were big pores, you know, they were full pans. And then, yeah, you see them pull from the edges a little bit, but they're not falling out or anything. They're not brittle. They're not like cracking and like falling out, which would be a big problem. They, they do the job. They're, they're good. I like them. Uh, so let's look at some artwork that I did with this. And I also use this new paper from Artistro. This is their watercolor pad, 30 sheets. You get a three pack for 20 something. Uh, I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good value. And one side of the paper is, um, actually no, they're both textured. I was thinking one was smooth and one was textured, but no, they're both cold press. I did this with the, um, with the Da Vinci's. I was starting with a holiday trio, but I know I pulled other colors in there because I didn't think the colors from the holiday trio were really the best mixers. These are those colors, by the way, they don't really mix the greatest cause they're so, uh, they're kind of like off off like um off primary kind of so like the green is kind of uh it's kind of i don't know muted i mean that's pretty but it's just it's not i probably wouldn't just use those three colors and do much with them and i think that was the sea glass i swatched out but um yeah it was fun these these came out i like the way this came out i like this paper too it's cheap it's cellulose it's nothing fancy um that was not them that was not them Oh, never mind. I guess it's just those, just that for the Da Vinci in here. And then um, I wanted to just work up a couple other colorways of the little perfume bottle that I'm doing for uh, Michael's class. It's probably already up. It'll already be up by the time this review comes out. So I'll link to that. The replay will be up. But I did this in ink tents here, the pink one. And so I thought, well, I'll do a couple others with just some other colorways just to give the idea. And so I did these with the Da Vinci. They perform as I would expect a good quality watercolor to do. Are they gonna be my favorite paints, knock my socks off, and be the best of the best? Um, probably not, but I probably, because M. Graham, Core, those two are probably my favorite favorites. Um, but I like these, I like Daniel Smith, I like, uh, I like Shin Han, I like Mission Gold, I like Rembrandt a lot. There's, I think it doesn't really matter as long as you're going with a kind of legacy brand company, you're going to get decent paint, you know? And if you're looking for a made in the USA paint that is probably the easiest on your wallet, 
that you'll come across, you really can't go wrong with Da Vinci. They're going to perform as expected. They're probably not going to like, they're not going to romance you. They're not going to wine and dine you when you go to your website, when you go to the website to buy the paint. It's what you see is what you get, ma'am. You know, it's no frills, but it gets the job done and the paints are good. Um, and yeah, I recommend these. I don't think, I, I will say value for money. These are probably the best of Western paints. I would say value for money. You probably would do a little bit better with Paul Rubens maybe, but I think... Oh, this is tough, though, because the Paul Rubens just came out with the 4th Gen paints, and those are really good. Um, I, it's, it's a matter of preference, I think, at this point. But they're good. You can't go wrong. Try a tube of Ultramarine Blue. Try a tube of Brent Sienna. Try something that you know really well and compare it and see what you think. It's not You're not going to throw it to the back of the drawer and never use it. You will use it up. Um, yeah. it's uh, You're teaching a class? Give it a try. Buy some of those big tubes. Fill up palettes for your students. They're going to love it. You really can't go wrong. Um, and that's a hard thing. If it's like a tried and true supply I've, I've used for so long, it's so hard to say something new about it. It's everybody knows, I feel like everybody knows about it already. But um, here's another look at Denise's palette. There are several bespoke palettes on their website. Oh, and something else is kind of interesting. On their website, they, and I don't think you can get these at Blick. Maybe you can. I don't know. But on their website, they offer these dot card samplers, which are actually in kind of like a clamshell packaging. I think it might be like a... Um, I think it's like a cardboard type clamshell packaging, but they've got really generous dots and you can get the whole like range. I can't remember how much it is. It's more expensive than a regular dot card, I think. But then again, don't quote me on that because I usually don't buy dot, dot cards because I refuse to buy advertising basically. <laughs> Gonna advertise me, then give me the, the dot card. I'm not buying a dot card. Uh, I know, I'm just, I'm probably strange that way, but um, uh, but you can get these really generous dot card sets so you could swatch everything out, paint with it, do a little painting, decide what you like, and then order. So that might be smart if you're thinking about maybe putting in a big order next time they do a really big sale. Um, and that's a, that's a smart way to do it. I don't know if you could reuse those palettes or not. I guess it would depend if they're made out of cardboard or if they're like a plastic or something. But yeah, uh, I have no qualms. No qualms at all recommending this brand of paint and I think for for teachers absolutely it is a excellent choice to be able to outfit a class with professional paint and have it not break the bank even if you have to like charge a materials fee you could still get so much more for your money with Da Vinci than you can with any other brand um yeah they're a workhorse they're solid I like them I'm gonna use them more I, I this palette having them in this palette makes me more likely to use them because I have a greater variety and I do have that sap green from my Mary Blue just to round things out but um but yeah, it's a, it's a good paint, and I'm really looking forward to, to using that manganese a little bit more. Um, but I thought for all intents and purposes, the all in, <laughs> intents and purposes, I could do a pretty thorough review with uh, my experience of the brand thus far. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments below. Go take a look at their website. Have a look around. Um, I buy mine typically at Blick because I have other things to get at the same time and it's uh, they will run the same sales because generally when a manufacturer runs a sale on their, their website, they'll let their vendors also run sales. So, you know, it's up to you where you want to buy, I guess. And that does it for me today. I hope you found this useful and if, like, yeah. What do you think? Have you used this paint? Do you like it? Share your experiences in the comments below. If you have any good, bad, or whatever to share, that will help other people who are considering buying this paint. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy these tutorials. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye!